yeah, so we can see I haven't gotten off to a good start. Uh, I think we've made a few mistakes already, actually. And that, you know, we don't want to compound those mistakes. We don't want to, the last thing we want to do is have a session on Sunday start badly and end early as a result because Sundays are the best days to play and we just can't waste those opportunities. So again, pretty close. I think I have to call because of the size, because of um, he doesn't barrel a lot. We don't have a ton of hands on them. And we've had a good dynamic with this player, Kimmy, that I can three to five jacks here. So I'm pretty happy and confident to do that. See if Note Caddy tells us anything on his sizing here. I doubt that they will, but. Here I'm going to check call table three. And yeah, I think check folding table one is the best play there. Again, their cutoff range is their cutoff range is tighter than one would uh one would expect a, a general cutoff range to be. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna check call down table three. So I think that that's kind of clear. Uh, I'll explain in a second. I think this player is really loose, so we might not want to have called here. But the big blind's going to, excuse me, the big blind's going to not squeeze and is going to enter with a range against which we can set mine. So yeah, I mean that's one merit. I don't know if it's enough merits, and. Yeah, going to 3 to 5 on table 3 for value. Uh, now I'm going to fold because, you know, we can't raise effectively, it seems to me, and we certainly can't call down effectively. So, flop. What we hope is the nuts on table 1. Basically, in a spot like that on table 3, I see a player with a very high button open percentage and then a very high... Uh, excuse me, not a very high fold to 3-bet percentage, but a, a decent or normal fold to 3-bet percentage. So I expect them to make it to the flop in that situation with their button range pretty wide, and there aren't a ton of hands that they can play for value on a 9-3 deuce 2-club uh, board that runs out 8-6. And their turn timing was a little suspicious and then their river sizing is not thin value like i don't even know if they like they wouldn't make that river sizing even with i think matthew jander requires me to call with king 10 on table two so that's what i'm going to do not too happy about it because i don't play like sauce as they say so just hope to flop top pair like like a donk and check, check call down. <laughs> I mean, we know this player's a weak player, so there is that. Uh, I think, yeah, 91% fold to steal, just going to be stealing A2. And then here, this player uh, four bets on the button a lot, so I'm not going to be able to three effectively, and I don't think that's even in Chanda's suggested big blind defense range versus a 3x. So I'm going to fold there. And yeah, I think I'm going to fold table 4 too. If I was suited, I would call. Got some suggestions that that guy might be aggressive. Yeah, so the other thing about the table 3 hand with Ace Jack is that I'm showing him that I have a bluff catcher. So the player with a high river aggression frequency, once they sort of see that I have a bluff catcher, then I think often in that situation, they are going to try and capitalize on that. They're going to see it as the green light to go for it. So obviously he had equity, 
on the flop and the turn, which doesn't make his play too bad. I just think that I'm going to see through his river size a little bit, and it's hard to say what he thinks that I have, because I don't really expect him to believe that I'd check call twice with ace king, but maybe he, he did think that, and maybe he thought I would fold ace king on the river. I definitely would not have.